Look at that sweet, sweet old woman on there. She was probably a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to take a private lesson from a professional chef to learn all about birria. Birria is so much more than just a meaty quesadilla dipped in broth. Matter of fact, that version of birria wasn't even a thing in Mexico until recently, but more on that later. To help us navigate this vast topic, I've summoned Chicago birria royalty. Give it up for Chef Jonathan Zaragoza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing? So good. Ready to make birria. What's up, guys? So your family runs in, operates an extremely like popular and well-known birria taco spot. Yeah. Two locations now. Right? Two locations, mm -hmm. Uptown and Archer Heights. Okay, good. So like, how long has it been? Oh man, I've been cooking it since I was 12. I'm 34 now. Feels gross to say. 34. Math. All right, birria can probably be thought of and broken down into components, right? For sure. So we got the the meat, the protein. Yep. We got the salsa, the accoutrement, sure. called sure. the accoutrement. The consomme, mm -hmm. the dipping stuff, tortillas. Have to have tortillas. Fresh tortillas. Corn. Corn. Mm -hmm. Corn fresh. All right, cool. So let's start with the protein. Let's do it. All right, so birria, the protein for birria. I feel like this kind of gets contorted and messed up here in the States. I've seen a lot of beef birria. What's good? So it depends on where you're at in Mexico. What mm -hmm. is the animal that you're using? So in Jalisco, it has to be goat. That's our birria. A couple things need to happen. Has to be goat. There has to be agave leaves or pencas de maguey and some sort of wood fired in the ground situation. So in the ground situation with leaves on there. I've been to your restaurant. How do you do it in the restaurant? So we don't do it in the restaurant because of Chicago. Fire code. It's fire code <laughs> yeah. Chicago. So what we do, we do it in steam pots and uh -huh. the quality is still really, really high. Yeah, dude, yeah. it's steamed. Uh, so it kind of like keeps all those like kind of juices in there. It's not like you're boiling it in water and leaching it all into that water. Right. Of... Um, and because of the way we do it, you know, we marinate it and then roast it in lard, which mm -hmm. we'll get into later. Yeah. It kind of, you know, lends itself to our technique. Okay, so this is a little like restauranty for like a home cook, a home cook I guess, yeah. but how could like people steam goat at home? If you have a large stock pot with yeah. like an insert, mm -hmm. a, like a perforated insert, yeah, you sure. could definitely use that. You can always braise it as well mm -hmm. to get it tender and then you can pull it from that liquid and then marinate gotcha. it and roast it. So All there's right. ways to get your goat tender. So you basically just gotta, you just gotta tenderize the goat. That's, That's it. kind of like That's what's the name going of the game. on here. Okay. Yeah. Let's get this going here, man. We yes, got our, sir. we got our water. We got our steamer insert. Yeah. Big boy steamer insert. Now we just season. Yeah. And if you wanted to use some sort of leaf, you could yeah. definitely use agave leaves or banana leaves and like line your container with it. Do you have banana leaves? Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> I do. Of course he has banana leaves. <laughs> yeah, fine. Banana leaves. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, so what I would do is do a long one in one direction. Uh-huh. Okay. And then we Look can kind of like split them and do this. Beautiful. Okay, sweet. All yeah. right, so yeah, now we season, right? Yeah. Where from the animal like are these cuts? I see some so, ribs in there. Yeah, so that's another thing with beetroot is you want different textures and different cuts because mm. again, we're talking about a whole animal preparation. So if you go to the butcher, any kind of different textures you can get. We, this is the um, this is the ham. Buttocks. Oh, yeah, the buttocks area. Um, this is shoulder. Some butt, some shoulder. Yeah, so silky, a lot of fat in there. And then the ribs are just, for me, texturally, when they're crisped up, yeah. it's like there's nothing better. Yeah. So yeah, you wanna ideally do this overnight. Okay. Yeah, you dry it. And just dry it out. Dry, yeah, dry brine it, overnight's good. Especially with these big- um, Hunky pieces. Hunky pieces. You want a lot of salt on it. All right, so seasoned up, we can close her up. Yeah, close, close her, her up. up like that. Both sides. Cool, cool, cool. All right, word. So yeah, if you're doing this at home, don't be afraid to kind of like stack in a pot if you don't want to go out and get a hotel pan, you know? For sure. And we talked about it. The name of the game is get the goat tender uh -huh. on the first cook. As long as it's salted and cooked tender. You're good. You're good. Cool. Yeah. Get a tender. Moral get a story. tender. All right, so we're going to pot this on the back burner here. All right. Okay, so this beer has been cooked already, right? It's, it's already finished up. The stuff that we did back there needs, what, probably like three more hours before it's tender? Yeah. So for the sake of time, we went ahead and kind of did this ahead. So this is just cooked and chilled uh, birria, goat, that has actually already been rubbed with mole, but I'll let you take it from there. Yeah. What we'll do, we'll apply more mole because it's been kind of hanging yeah. out for a minute. Mm -hmm. So we'll apply our mole. It's an ancho-based mole that we have here. Mm -hmm. It's just ancho chilies and spices. Gotcha. So when you taste- oh, Mole rojo? Mole rojo is yeah. what we- Rojo? Rojo. I can do the tongue thing. Uh, rojo. Not right now, dude. My girl's on the set. Not right now, dude. So, yeah, anyway, the mole rojo, um, it's just ancho chilies and spices. Like, if you presented this as a mole dish, people would kind of be like, this isn't it. So, 
mole rojo, the, nothing is toasted except the sesame seeds in it. Hmm. So it's got the same kind of spices that we've been working with, the clove, the pepper, cumin, but you'll taste it and it's salty. Because what we're doing, we're using it as a marinade, right? You can see that fat cap, because we totally. refried it in lard. When you make mole, you gotta refry it in lard. We should probably heat this up a little bit totally. before we apply it, Okay. Um, just to smooth it out. So basically to reiterate, like you're gonna cook the goat, Get it tender, right? right? Let it cool. Then we're gonna rub it with mole. Yep. Which is this? Yeah. Which we're gonna heat up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is this is what do we got here? It's orange. So this is seasoned lard from our restaurant. Okay. So this is lard that has been cooked in or roasted in. That color that you see is mole that has you know leached, leached into, into the, the fat. Yeah, leached into the fat. Look at that color. So it's like mole fat. It is mole fat, and the the key to the flavor is it's kind of like a mother that we use. So we've had uh, lard from day one. That's cool. Just constantly. Mother lard. Yeah. Mother lard. Mother lard. Scrape that bottom. We don't want to waste mommy's lard. <sighs> There's got to be a better way to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I talk to you in the other room for a second, though? <laughs> Dude, you're embarrassing me. All right. Sick. We just warm this mole up a little bit and mm -hmm. blitz it a little bit to make it a little more smooth. Yeah. So we need to heat the lard up. We'll put it on the stove. Let's get Just it. Just get it warm it. and hot. And while that's warming up. We should probably preheat the oven too. We're gonna go 450. 450. Okay. Roasty, but manageable. Is there a little stage right here? Love it. Okay. So um, at the restaurant, we kind of just brush it on. Okay, I have a brush. My, my birria, my dad will say it, is like richer because I dip. You gotta dip. I dip the meat into the mole. I love that. Okay, so, so we're here. dipping, baby. I'm gonna dip. I wanna dip as well. You can't miss anything. You can't miss the bones because the bones are a lot of a lot of flavor. So um, when you're here, you could just kind of like rub it in a little bit and then you're done. That's it. That's it. That's it. It smells like jerk chicken. It does smell like jerk It's the cumin. Kind of looks like it too. I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm just going <laughs> to stand that you want to dip some out. No, you dip. All right. So that's good dip. That's good. Okay. okay. That looks great. Kind of let them sit there and get all mm -hmm. sexy like, Ooh, what's that piece? That's, this is the, so this is the uh, espinazo or the loin. The loin. So you can see like, oh yeah, if you this is it. a spine. This would be on top, the top. Like lamb animal. chops, but like with goat. Exactly right. Look at that, goat chops. Yeah. How's the uh, coverage here? Am I being a little you're, too aggressive? No, you're, you're, you're good. Okay. Yeah. I can take some, okay. No, you're good. All right. All right, we got our delicious chocolatey goat all rubbed down with the mole. Yes, sir. And I think, yeah, we got our seasoned lard ready to go now. Roughly what temperature is this? So that's around like 300. At the restaurant you said you you put it in the oven just kind of whenever there's a little sizzle, little sizzle. Yeah, you want to hear a sizzle, like okay. when you put it in the oven just to kind of get like a little crust going. Got you. I'm going to go for the, the one with the natural built-in hand. Get it. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah. I wonder if all this is going to fit in here. We're going to just do a little bit. Okay. Any specific pieces you want? I, Maybe this, I like the loin. Yeah, do, do the loin. It's pretty sure. big. Yeah, loin. Yeah. Okay. Maybe one more. We're good. Cool. There you go. And now, do we, do, we, do we need a lid or no lid? No lid. No lid. Into the oven. Into the oven, 450. So it's done. Yeah. How do we know it's done? I look at it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nine, Set a timer, nine. check on it in what, like 20? Yeah, 20 is good. 20? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh yeah, what the hell, that looks amazing. Hell yeah. Look look how tender it is though, wow. right there. Squishy AF. Goat out, Goat assorted out. pieces. Which one are you gonna pull? So I'm gonna pull this guy. Okay. All right. Is that how you do it at the shop? So when we do it at the shop, you just take your knife here, and then this should just. Slide. Oh, you wanted the cleaver. What are we doing? Yeah, cleaver, cleaver. My cleaver. bad. Dude. My bad. So. Run it back. <laughs> oh damn. Damn is right. This is like one of my favorite cuts oh, on the go. It's so satisfying, dude. This cut right here is like one of the best textures. So that's how we serve it at the shop. Just don't crush it too much. No, you use those crispy. The yeah, like see how the it looks like the piece it was. Yeah. Like the integrity is still intact. It's not chopped meat because mm -hmm. you work so hard to like make it nice. So here again, just using. A little bit of pressure. Almost like just the weight of the knife. Exactly right. You're not cutting. It's like there. And then maybe one more here. So you see I'm like opening yeah. up for people. So that's that. So this is good eating too. This is the pistola. The shank? So yeah, you can see it's like crispy, but when the broth hits and it kind of reconstitutes, it's insane. So here, look, check this out. Look how crispy wow. and lacy it is. Wow. So yeah, 
little easy. Fried in the lard, so smart. There it is, and that's how we do it at the shop. Crispy, fatty, soft underneath, but mm -hmm. it's got that like shield of crispiness. Yeah. It's amazing. So I would plate this up and then consomme right on top. And then that's, so that's how you'd serve with the tacos. Mm -hmm. Old school. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, tortillas, the next time. component. Yep. This is a, a vast topic. There's lots of different kinds, lots of different ways to get it done. For sure. Don't feel bad if you have to use yeah. packaged stuff. Yeah. No problem. Packaged like flour, that's corn flour. Yeah, it's just the intent of making them. So if you, you know, if you're not buying store-bought ones, like try practicing with this, yeah. so, you know? It, yeah. If you live near like a Mexican grocery store, they're gonna have like, and they'd sell fresh tortillas, grab those. If you, yeah. for some reason, somehow like have access to a tortilleria, Obviously go there, check it out, make the drive. They might have dough that you can buy there, right? Yeah, for sure. But in a pinch, which is what most of us have access to, maseca? Maseca. So all you need to do to use this bag stuff is just add, just add water, a little bit of salt. That's it. There's yeah. no lard, no nothing. So at the restaurant, we don't use lard in our tortillas. Okay. That's how you do it. Yeah, how we the do style. it. style. Mm -hmm. The lady who's been working the tortillas at your place, she's been doing it a while, right? Yeah, there's two that, that two, two ladies that have been with us for a long time. Mari, she's been with us longer, and then Lili, two tortilleras. Um, they're amazing. Yeah, she didn't realize, but she was flexing. Like she doesn't mean to flex. Oh no, she doesn't she's mean just, to, but she's she just, just sick. Does. <laughs> yeah, she's like, yeah. Mari's Mari's just <laughs> bringing her yeah. events and stuff, and I I always try to get her own, her own Instagram because she would just blow up because it's a she's the cutest person ever, and she's so good at her job. So. Amazing. Yeah. All right, man, let's make some. We're gonna mix these flowers together. Yeah, you know, just this is just for aesthetics. So yeah, this is sure. white corn. This is yellow. I we'll like a I like a yellow tortilla. Am I, am I tripping? Do you like what do you like? Let's do a yellow tortilla. What do you like? What do you like? I like a good tortilla. Doesn't matter what it okay, is. Okay, let's make it good. Let's make it good. How much uh, do we need? So according to the bag, it says two cups of maseca mm -hmm. to one and a half cups of water. Got you. Wow, and then that makes nineteen tortillas. That's very um, precise. Very precise. <laughs> nineteen, not twenty. Okay. Yeah. Two cups. You know, at the restaurant, the rule of thumb is every pound of masa equals a dozen tortillas. Okay, so this is one cup. Love it, love it. One and a half cup. And then any salt in this this guy? Yeah, we'll do salt. Little pinch. All right. Little pinch. There you go. Cool. Need him? Just yeah. mixer, mixer, use mixer your hands? Mixer around, yeah. So you can see if you hold up your right hand right now, it's like masa stuck to it. Yeah. When it's kneaded to the perfect point, your hand will come out clean. Really? Yeah. So we, we do have to actually give this thing some. Yeah. We're not because there's no gluten in corn, right? There's does this, no have, does in this corn. have wheat flour in it? No, or? but the niche pro process, uh -huh. uh, applying the food grade lime yeah. to it gives it gluten like textures. It kind of denatures the corn and the germ in there. It is kind of getting a little tougher. Don't go by the bag either yeah, all the time. I feel so too like we might need a little more flour. Yeah, we're going to do a little bit of a little bit extra here. All right. We don't want too much because again, no, yeah. it's gonna lose some uh, moisture by just sitting there. When we're done kneading this, I'll let it rest for about 30, just so it hydrates. So you gotta figure if it's sticking to your hand, it's gonna stick to the plastic. Mm -hmm. So it might be a little too tacky, but again, mm -hmm. if we let it rest, it's gonna kind of lose some of that moisture, hydrate a little it's bit. It's gonna more. hydrate on the inside, but kind of lose moisture on the outside. Then when yeah, you mix it then, together, it'll be like balanced. Yeah, type, there you go. Idea. Let's put it to bed. Sleep child. Okay, so. What's this for? All right, so this is to press the tortillas in the tortilla press. Otherwise, that is the tortilla get... press. Yes. Where'd you get this thing? This is from the market in Tijuana, open air market. Dude, I need, to, I need to go to Tijuana, man. You Next should. time you're in TJ, will you pick one of these up for me? I got you. Sick. Um, this is just a regular grocery bag. So I just take a knife here and just kind of cut the top off here. I'm, I'm going to cut like about there. I'm going to take this all the way back and then this side too. Make sure it's clean at the seam. Okay, right. we're good. And you could use this forever. <laughs> you can use it forever, man. Yeah. Pretty much. So then what we do is you take this tortilla press, okay? You and then this it. lives mm. right there. Right across. Right across and then that. Cool. We size All right, pretty. we're ready, man. You want to check on our dough? Let's do it. Sick. Dough's ready. Dough's, Dough's ready. looking good. Nice yeah. and smooth. We got our plancha here over medium high heat. Mm -hmm. We're cranking it up a little higher. Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then, so we have our whole little station set up here with this heating up. We have our- Tortiero. Tortiero. Because which... a lot of people don't realize the last cook of the tortilla is the steaming that happens in here. Ah. So off the plancha, they need to sit with each other for a little bit. So this isn't just for aesthetics and because it's nice to serve No, there's in. practicality purposes thing. behind okay, that. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, cool. So we'll leave this right here. Yeah. But we got to start smashing, huh? A smash. So I'm going to take my little ball. Okay. Take a little ball. Mm -hmm. All right, right in the middle. It's about a golf ball. Yeah, three finger pressed is what I call it. There, and then you palm it. Palm. 
Okay, and then. Yeah, this this heavy boy really. Heavy look boy at that. That's great. Yeah, so that's kind of what you're looking for here. Beautiful. Okay. Just and right on the smoking hot. Right on the the dismount. You did you did this. Yeah. You did. So a lot of people don't fight the komal. A lot of people are afraid of getting too close. Like. You're not gonna burn yourself. Yeah. Unless you're touching the metal for a long time, you're not gonna burn yourself. All right, here we go. See, look oh, at this, yeah. it's nice and gliding. It's got gliding. hockey puck. Totally, so what I'm gonna do is you get it towards the drier end. All right, there you go. That was like, it's literally like almost like levitating. Pretty Whoa. Much. Shall see Dude, really what is going on? It's like crazy. air hockey. Hey, it's so cool. <laughs> Does that, is that normal? Not really. What, you got <laughs> some black going magic here? going on over here, dude. <laughs> we can literally play air hockey with this thing. Okay, and so like the telltale sign I've heard of a good tortilla is if it Puffs. Puffs. So, yes, that's like aesthetically and mm -hmm. texturally, it means you've nailed everything pretty okay. much. Okay. So you think about all the factors working against the puff. So you have to get the press right, your surface temp has to be right, you know, can't be too hot, can't be too cold. So what I'm saying is, if your tortilla doesn't puff, don't don't take it personally, you yeah. know? The so, tortilla still might like you. It might like but you. But ours just, is puffing. It's just a little shy. So yeah, this is puffing. So. But the puff, it's properly rated, but don't, Lose don't tweak out if you yeah. don't get a puff going. So then we're gotcha. gonna yeah put it in the uh, put it in the old steamer basket mm -hmm. here. Take that, Stop drop it. it. And this is basically like a, it's basically like a pita. Yeah, you want similar to... idea with the steam is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me let me try one of these. Yeah, let me do try it. One of these. Technique, bro. Can the white boy make a tortilla? You're not that white. I don't know, dude. You're like beige. Dude, turn that around. Turn your. Oh wait, you're tatted. I'm tatted. As fuck. <laughs> I'm beige, bro. I don't no. know. That, that's blind. That's worse than. Like I bet you, with like with like the like the lights and stuff. Yeah. This might blind one of the viewers. There's probably like a sheen right here. Yeah, his <laughs> opacity is insane. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. No. Oh wait. Shh, shh. Three finger. You got it, man. Three finger, bro. He's looking at this. He's like. Oh, it kind of stops where. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, you kind of deformed, kind of deformed, but we still love it. Okay, kind of messed up, kind of not the best. <laughs> Do it. Should I pop it in? Pop it. I think I'm gonna go. Pop them out. I think I'm gonna go. Okay. Is that all right? That's, dude, what did we just talk about? See? <laughs> Don't go back a second time. It's never good, man. All right, all right. There's all right. a life lesson there. That never is a life never lesson. get back with your ex, pretty much, right? <laughs> is that what we got from that? All right, ball on. Three finger flat. I'm gonna hit it with a little palm action. Do your thing, man. How'd that work out? Pretty good. <laughs> Back to the ball. Back to the ball. Ball down. Three finger technique, a little t Back How? first, then palm. Yeah, bag first, palm after. Oh, bag. it's back first, then palm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've been watching. <laughs> palm, Shh. palm. I'm feeling a smooth boy on this. You can't be scared of the tortilla because it knows. Clean release. Mm -mm. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't end on that. I'm definitely gonna. You're keep like going. the Picasso of tortilla making. Yeah, dude, I did that on purpose. It's abstract. Send, <laughs> sell this online. You'll get money for it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna tell you what you're doing wrong. All right. You're so f***ing close. All right. You're good. You're good. <sighs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you're you, enough. Like... It's not enough. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> here. All right, what's it's up? It's just the dismount. I'll watch you. Yeah. I got you. The dismount. You. Yeah. So when you're here, your family, first of all. <laughs> and then second of all. Just you lay it off your palm a little bit. Yeah. Gravity's doing the work here. Okay. So when you get here, let it go. Okay. Let it go. And I you're not you're not pulling up or down. You're st still at si the same height. It's just a you're simply letting it go. That's it. Simply let it go. Let it go, dude. All right, all right, all right, all right. Center stage, right there. Let's go. I saw what you were doing. You see how I pushed your hand down? Yeah, a little yeah, bit? yeah. It was just, like when it's you were like going when up when you're trying to backflip for the first time and you got the guy to do the thing. I've never backflipped. Neither have I. <laughs> Neither have I. <laughs> Ow. Neck. <laughs> I never backflipped either. Oh, that's <laughs> that actually <was> real. <laughs> yeah, that's real. Oh, you were doing a bit. No, dude. dude. You slept on it wrong. Oh. My okay. neck. <laughs> My back. Also. Yep, there you go. The other two. Hit it the up. <laughs> and the other, the other two. And the other two things <laughs> after that. You comment below what the other two things are. It's <laughs> <laughs> so fucking funny, dude. So here, look. Ready to flip. Adam's that confidence. Tortilla. That confidence. Yeah, that's it's awesome. what it is, man. Love it. You got it, dude. You got it, man. Sick. Let's go. Good shit. Not gonna touch it. 
I didn't touch it. Don't touch it. I didn't touch it. Yeah, it's not gonna hold up. Almost touched it. Can we run can we run a replay of that? Run that replay. Look, you got a puff, dude. Oh, you got a puffer. Are we good on that? Yeah. Take it out. So another thing, come here. Yeah. Is when you serve at the restaurant, a big thing for us, this is a lomo or the loin. loin. And this is the cara, the cara. So the cara faces the customer. Okay. You plate your meat on there because the prettier side, the lomo. Oh, so the outside. Yeah. Okay. In Mexico, that's the way I've always seen tacos presented and stuff. It's yeah. just like. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like a rough side and a, and, a, and a presentable side. Yeah, it's a little sign of hospitality too totally. that you're thinking about the people like that too. Next component, the consomme. Am I saying that right? Consomme? Consomme. That's how we say it. Yeah. Consomme. But I consomme. understand it, yeah. I, I, can speak, I can speak the thing. You got it. Um, okay, so this surprised me. What do we got here? You're absolutely right about it surprising because our style of birria is very different than what most people would constitute a consomme. Mm -hmm. So ours is vegan. Uh, we just use Roma tomatoes, water, and some spices. So um, it's just something that we, I like it. I've enjoyed it. I don't know if it's, I'm used to eating this style of birria, but for me, it's like, Kind of fermented, it's a little sharp and like sour, kind of has that jowl Got grabbing that tomato. tartness. Sick. So into the water that goes. Let's do it. All right, so tomatoes in weight wise, measurement wise. Yeah, I would go two to one. Two to one, yeah, water, two to one to water to tomatoes. All right, cool. Yep. Kerplunk. Kerplunk these in with me, bro. Kerplunk. Kerplunk. Bye, little buds. So now we just boil these until they're super tender. We're looking for that pectin to kind of like come up and the work to be easier for us. So it gives you that nice texture, velvety. Mm -hmm. Okay, tight. Mm -hmm. So um, it goes no salt, nothing. No salt. Just just hit them fast, right? Yep. Okay. All right. So these things have been simmering for about 15 minutes. You can see their skins are starting to like come off and stuff, but they need more time, right? Yeah, we'll give them like another hour. You want them to boil for an hour because you want them really broken down. Okay, so the skin is sort of an indicator, but really we want that pectin to release into the water so it's a little thicker. Right. What's the next step? So once this is boiled into the texture it needs to be, mm -hmm. we'll leave them out on the counter overnight so okay. you get some like lacto fermentation, Ooh. very light. And then the next day we'll come in and puree them with cool. spices and strain them. Just like single day ferment vibe. Pretty much. Word. Lucky for us, I went ahead and did this last <laughs> night. Ah, check it out. The skin even looks a little more waterlogged. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're like totally falling apart. Yep. Look at that. Yeah, that's what you want. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that smells too. Very, very tomatoey. It's like V8. Straight up, like when I was like, I remember there was like a phase when I was like 15 that I would like order V8s because I thought it was like, it's healthy. like adult. adult. It was like an adult thing to do. You were a V8 kid, huh? No. Only for like a couple months. All right. Spice. Spice We're just gonna pop these all in, then it goes into the blender. Should we get this in the blender first? Yeah, that looks good. All right. We're gonna go in with some clove. All right. Pinch of clove. Pinch of clove. About the same of pepper. Pinch of pep. And then the oregano. You gotta do this. Release them oils. Release the oils. Release the oils. Release the oils. Release the crap. Oregano. Oregano. Do a tablespoon of garlic powder in there. Tablespoon of garlic powder. Whoa, that's too much, dude. No, I'm just kidding. Fuck. I'm just kidding. I was like, <laughs> you're good, you're good, you're good. I had to fuck with you a little bit. A little bit of cumin. All right. All right, Sass? Let's do two tablespoons of that. Two tablespoons of yeah. that. That work? Yeah, it's perfect. There you go. Sweet. And then we're gonna do pinch of a sweet. fat pinch of salt. Fatty P. Okay. All right. And so then, now we blend this this whole thing up. You gotta rip it. Just rip it. Rip it. Rip it, brother. All the way. And run it for like a minute. Oh yeah. Good stuff? That looks good. Thick. Thick. All right, so as a VA kid, I'm pretty randy right now. You're randy as Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That is a lot of consomme. It is. That's gonna be some alt, some really good you dippage. Do soup. Super good, oh yeah, and soup, right? Oh yeah. That's kind of like already soup. It's soup. All right, cool, on to the next one. Let's talk salsa. Let's do it. Um, all right, so what do we got here? So for our picante or our hot sauce that we mm -hmm. make at the restaurant, we use arbol chiles. Okay. So it's a dried chile, they're very spicy. Um, but for Jalisco, this is like the chili of choice when you're making a salsa. We like it spicy. Right, mm -hmm. spicy. Tomato and arbol, that's like the flavor of Jalisco. We really like those flavors. So we soak these overnight. 
Soak them overnight. Soft. Yeah, yeah. What I see a lot of people doing in their birria videos, they're boiling their peppers. You really don't want to boil a pepper because it kind of leaches out some bitterness and like those tannins that, that we want in there and all the flavors, like we don't want to boil the pepper. So steep your peppers, don't rolling boil your chilies, I would say. If you yeah. look at this texture, don't yeah. rub your eyes after or no. anything else. Yeah. Um, I've done that too many times. Yeah, dude. So yeah, you see like the texture here, it's yeah. like super tender. Oh yeah. And the skin's kind of like, yes, yeah, too Hydrated. Too, yep, exactly right. Okay. That's so what you want. Ideally though, you don't want to soak these overnight, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. And just to, to show you guys kind of what's going on here, this is a dried one, this is a soaked one. So it's still a little crackly, but for the most part, very soft. Okay, so we'll do like half, roughly half yeah, yeah. of these guys, and then I'll use a slotted spoon so we can control the amount of liquid. Uh -huh. Swing, schlop. Um, Liquid-wise, where do you want it, Papa? Just covered. Just, just covered. When they're just starting to float. Okay. That. We, want some, we want some floaters. Hell yeah. I might get a little excited and try to add all of it. I think you should. That's probably, probably That's good. probably <laughs> safer, okay. So these are basically the exact same spices that we used for the consomme. Yeah. Just with the addition of cinnamon and chocolate. This, this is really cool. I'm really excited to like see how this kind of works in. Talk to me about the chocolate, man. So the chocolate is unexpected because if you think about like the flavors going on, we have three sauces. The consomme is bright and acidic. Mm -hmm. And then the mole is very salty front end and that marinades to me. This picante, we wanted it to be spicy, but also we wanted it to provide some like sweetness. All the other flavors that we used already in the spices, in the consomme and stuff, we want them to come through even more. So when this hot sauce hits the plate and that hot consomme, mm -hmm. it gets like aromatic and it's just like makes you want to eat more of it. Oh yeah. So good. Creates that addiction factor for sure so this this is the chocolate huh that's the chocolate abuelita look at that sweet sweet old woman on there she was probably a real piece of <laughs> shit, but, um, <laughs> no she's sweet i'm she's so, so sorry. sweet you're <laughs> ruining for me she's a real piece of shit. <laughs> So there's better chocolates out there, but this is like the one that the person that taught my dad how to yeah. make this uses. Nostalgia. Nostalgia, right? yeah. So that's how much chocolate's going in. Ish. Okay, yeah. a little salt as well. Cha feel, cha definitely feel. Mm. Spices and chocolate, yeah. chili and water. Let it go. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then we gotta go slow. So what you're looking for is the seeds of the peppers and the little skin particles here to be super small. Cool. Not really visible. Okay. Invisible flake. Now this one, maybe we don't whack because it'll end up in your eyeball. Which is not good. Not good. Very vibrant. Way super. more orange than I thought it would turn, honestly. But that looks like how it does at the shop. It does. Watch the kickback, my friend. And then we'll puree the rest of it, and then that, because there's a little bit more water over there, mm -hmm. it'll get us back to the, a decent texture. Cool. Throw it in. Throw it in the bag. All right, this is actually a really like cool nifty trick. Whenever you have like a really thick puree in your strainer, and you're, you know, just kind of like plunge it mm -hmm. with a ladle. We probably have uh, enough out of there to pour the rest in, right? To yeah, for sure. It up. Yeah, do it. All right. Do it. Pour it. Yeah. There you go. I mean, me personally, I wouldn't have poured that much in there at, all at once, but yeah. you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so if you know what you're doing, you yeah. wouldn't do no, that. No, fucking around with you, dude. <laughs> Got a pretty solid yield, two quarts. Yeah, it's a lot of hot sauce. Yeah. See where the flavor's at. We know it's gonna be spicy. My palate's shot for the next 30, so don't ask me. <laughs> it's good. It needs a little salt. Salt? It's good. You all right? Let's <laughs> get emotional. Spicy. Yeah? Don't talk, <laughs> Don't talk to me for the next 20. Damn beautiful though. It's like, you it's know gorgeous, what? Right? I will say, it's funny because it's like, you know, it's just like this like beautiful, like natural salsa, but it does look like buffalo sauce. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, this, if you added this to buffalo. So I had a lot. It's spicy. I had a lot. Yeah, I saw the spoon. <laughs> it's nice though. We did it. Salsa done. 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 I mean, dude, this looks pretty similar to when I went to your spot and got the birria. Pretty close, man. Handmade corn tortillas, mm -hmm. chili arbo salsa. Yep. Salsa here, which we made off camera. If you want the full recipe for this, it's gonna be over on my Patreon. But really, honestly, any red salsa is gonna work. For sure. Right? Yeah. Then we have the consomme here from our wonderful 
lactic acid fermented tomatoes. Yep. Spiced. Of course, Iberia needs no explanation with the consomme around it. And then the accoutrement, which is very simple. Easy. Cilantro onions line. That's it, everything you need. This is birria. For us. For us. Yeah. For Jalisco, right? For Jalisco. Okay. Yeah. Should we, should we hit it? I think we should. Grab a tortilla. This is the inside. This is the yeah, outside. Yeah, so you'll grab the meat, put the meat yeah. on that side, yeah. Cool. So I like grabbing stuff that's touching the consomme. Oh yeah, little like drippage. Little, yeah, that little piece. Mm -hmm. I got you, my boy. Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. There you go. Cool. Little onion. Little onion. I love onions so Me much. Too. What is the combo of cilantro and onion called in Spanish? Isn't uh, there like a name for it? We say, like if you're asking for tacos, we say con todo. Yeah, like you ask for, dame dos tacos, and then they'll say, Look, los quieres con todo? And that means you want it with everything, and mm -hmm. you say yes to that. Got you. Mm -hmm. Do we dip? You could. I like mine no. like this. Try it straight First up. bite, yeah. And okay. then after that, you start getting weird. Okay, okay. okay. Cheers, mate. Mmm. That's good, that's, man. that's dang tasty, bro. It's really good. So like the spreads out there, yeah. at the end of the day, birria are goat tacos. Pretty much. Now, if you go to, I have friends in Tijuana, um, so Northern Mexico. Yeah, yeah. TJ, baby. TJ, baby. They use beef and it's just because it's more arid up yeah. there. So what is birria though? Like, is it like, is it, does it mean that, right. is it, is it a technique? It's a technique. It's a technique. It's not a it's meat. It's a technique. So in just Jalisco, it's goat, okay. yeah, in Jalisco, you hear birria you know it's the technique and it's goat. Okay. Where if you go to Tijuana, their birria in Tijuana is insane. It's delicious. And a lot mm. of it's because these people have been doing it for generations. A lot of the people that make it in Tijuana are from Jalisco. Okay. So the roots are always in Jalisco. Oh, really? Yeah, but once you start branching away from anything else, you know, things yeah. start changing. A lot of people are like, oh, it's not traditional. It's like, dude, that word needs to get scrapped a little bit. Right. Because it's like... Like authentic traditional. These are all dangerous kind of words because it's like, what does that even mean? What's it's it mean? different to other people. Take it from somebody that yeah. cooks a food that's competing with their grandma's yeah. version of it. Yeah. I'll never win mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. That's fine, you never can. Mm -hmm. Where is, does Chihuahua cheese come from? That's north too, right? That's northern, yeah. Okay, so Chihuahua's that comes north. to the right side, yes. I think the next natural topic of conversation here, quesabiria. Yeah. Is that a northern Mexico thing? So like when traditions cross the border, yeah. they change. In 2007 when we opened, my uncle, uh, he would come in on his lunch breaks, tell the tortilla, I want one tortilla, cheese, birria, another tortilla cut it into quarters. So we never sold quesabirias before that day. And huh. we started making them because a customer saw him having one of his like orders. And yeah. they're like, we want one. And they caught like wildfire. Not in the style that they're doing them now where they dip it in the broth and kind of thing. That's more American. Yeah, but, um, which is super interesting. The thing about it is like, always oh, a traditional, I want to have the conversation of like, is it objectively delicious? That's the pass fail test for mm -hmm. me with mm -hmm. food. I know people that are not Mexican and they cook amazing Mexican food. It's like, dude, let's start stripping it back and like yeah, you seeing don't, it for what it is. You if know? you had to be the, the culture of which food you're cooking, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Yeah. So, you know, like I just- How like, dare you touch yeah, that tortilla? Exactly, it's like, what the hell? Yo, but real quick to rewind. Quesabiria, mm -hmm. it's American? You know, where's it, where's it start kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, well, oh, right. Who started it first. Right. So. But like it got popular in it the, got, it caught I thought, like it, was a, I thought it was in LA. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was a Mexican food that just got popular here, but really it's sort of this like Mexican American like melting pot area yeah. that made it popular and then it's kind of spread everywhere. And people come into our shop, which is an old school yeah, shop, and they started asking for it, uh -huh. like in the style of, mm -hmm. and we're like, okay, cool, we're gonna dip the tortilla in mole our, our way mm -hmm. and do it with our birria and stuff. Yeah. Same you everything. guys put in the mole too? Yeah, we drag the tortilla through the mole. Wow. That's what makes ours really, really good. There you go. Yeah. Well, I think we better make one. I think we should. Okay. It's gonna be good. It's like, dude, that's good as These are great. Yeah. This is great. It's not gonna be bad. Just put melted cheese on it and then what, are we, what is that gonna get bad Even somehow? Even better. <laughs> all, right, all right, let's do it. That's the thing. Really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, man. There's only one way to finish this off. How do you do this? Pour up. Pull up. Cheers, bud. Wait, wait, we haven't done this the whole shoot. This one? Yeah. Yeah. This is delicious. Mm. 
That was awesome. Yeah, man. Learned a lot. I learned a lot. I like the steaming technique. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna it's use it. <laughs> it's so dope. I was like watching it, I was like, hmm. I like that. Next time you're in Chicago, you gotta check out his spot. What's it called? Birreria Zaragoza. Where's two locations. At? One in Uptown, one in Archer Heights. Of oh, Chicago. We're in Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. Follow him on Instagram. Goat Boy International. That's me. Goat Boy International. Goat Boy baby. Choo. You're I think you're, I think it's safe to say you're a goat man. I'm a goat man. I'm getting there. You're it's getting... the mustache that gives me the man <laughs> vibe. Thanks again, bro. Thanks, man. This, this is, is great. Yeah. If you guys liked this video, learned a thing or two, give it a like, it helps us out. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, classic. If you're not new to the channel, welcome back. Come say what up in Discord, we're hanging out having great conversation over there. It's just a little community where we can all get together and chat about life, about food, about goat, everything. Also, easiest way to support us is by going over to the Patreon and signing up. It's literally five bones a month for a bunch of free extra recipes, chances to win cool prizes, for example, giving away a wonderful chef's knife that I got in France a couple months ago. Sorry, a couple weeks ago, I can't read. Um, so yeah, that's the best way to support us. TY, so much for watching. Hasta la próxima. <laughs>